Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zed. Today I'm going to be talking about BNJO as an update. You'll find my previous DD in the description below if you'd like to watch that one after this one. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow with the algorithms. Subscribe and leave your notifications on. Now, at any point, if you feel that you're messing out on the trading um, technical indicators and what they mean, you'll find uh, a playlist in the description below called Educational Series Playlist that will explain just that. I'm going to go through technical analysis, news, and what I think about the stock. I hope I don't bore you. <laughs> so moving on forward, you get to see here on the MACD that the stock seems to be a little bit uh, gathering a little bit of power, moving on a little bit uh, towards the pos uh, positive side. Uh, it seems that the most negative on the MACD is on the 24th of August. It doesn't signify anything, but it signifies that it's moving in the right direction. On the ADX here, it does show though a very strong negative trend has been formed. On the William percent R, you get to see the stock has gone from oversold towards neutral. On the momentum here, you get to see that the stock is trading sideways and the movement is sloppy. And on the moving averages here, you get to see that the stock tr uh, is trading below the blue line, which is a 200 SMA, which is bearish. Below the purple line, 50 SMA, which is bearish. Stock is trading uh, way below the trading action zone reversals are likely between the 30 MA and the 10 SMA. Uh, and the 30 MA is above the 10 SMA. That's the red line above the green line. Now, moving on towards the one hour perspective, what we get to see here is a little bit of a difference. Uh, so, well, not much difference here other than it's really indicating that it's trading sideways. But the significance here is that the stock is in the trading action zone. I'm going to zoom here even closer. And you get to see that the stock is in the trading action zone. It did break into it. Uh, got denied and then we get to see another reversal from the bottom side of the trading action zones so it might see a positive reversal there might be just slight but still significant uh, enough to be considered uh, 30 may is still above 10 sma that's bearish the stock price is below the 50 sma and the 200 sma that's bearish uh, you get to see the adx here is sloppy uh, you get to see a william percent r is trading more sideways around neutral uh, momentum here that is uh, a bit more uh on a better scale that we used to see on the one hour on the one day perspective so seems to be a bit strong momentum there and an macd that is moving a little bit more positive in the extended market on the moving average band which is here in blue you get to see that the top of the band is around 0.80 and the bottom of 0.5 now do i expect this to kind of be trading in this at this level at this point uh doesn't give me anything significant so i'll ignore it now on the fibonacci retracements get to see significant supports and resistance. So what is the level of the significant support and resistance? Right on here. And we get to see that there is a significant one happening around the 0.59 region as a support and a 0.70 as a resistance on terms of, uh, in terms of significant uh, resistance. Now on just, without Fibonacci tracements, on the resistances and supports, you get to see a very strong support at the 0.59 to the 0.60 mark, especially the 0.60. So it has been a resistance here, a resistance here, a support here, and a support here, and a support here. So that is a significant support. Now, other supports that are significant is, of course, the 61 mark. Uh, below the 60, you have the 59. You have uh, below that, you have the 57. Uh, below that, you have the 0.4. Now, in terms of resistances, you have the 63 cents, uh, a significant one, 64, 65, 67, uh, 69. Uh, 72 and then you get to see 73 now moving on you get to see a bit more different things here in terms of news uh something very alarming is the amount of proposed offerings and amounts to be registered and everything in between uh and you get to see form s3 uh sorry s8 over there 424b5 for 125 million dollars in offered in stocks uh 40 million dollars this is a letter for their meeting happening on August 31st at 10 a.m. Uh, I need guessed it. The proposal is for more shares. So they want to increase more shares. Um, so it seems like it's a delusion machine. Um, big thing here, though, happening is they have this new CFO. Uh, this, this guy used to work for Tesla. Uh, I'm not sure how significant that is for me. It's not that significant. It's not like he was the head operations. But yeah, he worked for Tesla. Um, now another thing going on for, um, the buy nano Sapphire product. I did mention before the Sapphire product is a game changer in the gene game. 
um, and you get to see the CLIA certified lab expands uh, to get have the sapphire offered in the labs. Um, they also did previously in my last video did mention about the add the market equity program, um, and so basically what I get to feel, see on this one here is yes the stock is the equity is amazing it has a lot of future it's a game changer, but I really wish they have a lot less shares that they keep diluting this market with. Uh, that's something in the back of my head that really pisses me off when you see a company that has a lot of potential, but you know, they want to make uh, use of this one. They want to keep raising more capital to fund their uh, programs. Cool and all, but it hurts investors. You get to see the institutional investors are careful about this one. BlackRock has liquidated all their shares. But you get to see Morgan Stanley here is sitting only around 300 shares. Royal Bank of Canada, 300. Uh, the most significant ones are uh, Equihina International Group, Northern Trust Group, and uh, a few others that hold altogether perhaps somewhere a good amount of shares. Uh, Elieska Investment Group has around a million shares in this one. So. There is a bit of institutional values interest, but nothing significant in this week. So that is alarming for me. And they get, I think they see the same thing I'm seeing at the point. Now, when it comes into insiders, um, I haven't looked that up yet. Oh, that was an oops for me, but let's take a quick look in terms of insiders and you don't get to see anything significant. So that, that makes me wonder if they are so bullish about their own company, why are they not holding their own shares? Right? So it's definitely something. Uh, another thing, uh, we don't see any 13G's uh, filings or passive in passive investments all the way since February. So that's another thing. Now, how would I trade this stock? I definitely want to see weight again. And it's, uh, it's currently testing that 0 0.59, 0 0.6 uh, support really heavily. I would say it's a 0.59 because the 0.6 has been broken. 0.59. If it does hold the 0.59 for a few days, there is significant improvements I can see for the stock and I can see an uprise. Now, going on towards, let's say, the six months one day, you get to see the stock has a really nice uptrend. And probably somewhere around here, bumpers got to action. And whenever that happens, for every pump, there's a dump. Uh, so it really bled through. Now, right now, we're, we're reaching back to the levels where it was going on an uptrend. Now, whether it kind of holds that traction and continues towards the uptrend, that will be a positive sign. But it has another option too. You get to see a lot of dilution. Uh, the meeting is happening. And I have a feeling that they will as well approve for uh, the additional shares. Uh, just because they're trying to sugarcoat it as, you know, they needed to recruit and retain new key talent. Uh, a bunch of other things basically try to say, hey, we need more. Uh, this is very fun, much fundamental to our operation. And, you know, down the road might see as well a reverse play coming out of it so if i was holding this stock i would definitely want to sell before august 31st uh so that it's 10 a.m so you don't have a lot of time for this because august 31st is monday so i'll be selling monday pre-market buying it after the dip because i do expect a dip after this goes on yes uh and then but i also do want to see that it holds the 59 mark it does dip somewhere around the 0.5 mark, the 0.52 mark, around the low 50s. I think it's a it's a good buy for a longer term. But that's just my opinion. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. Have a wonderful day.